Welcome to Postscript. Here we hope to answer your questions and help you dig deeper into the messages and sermons at FaithBridge by talking with the teacher of the day. Hello and welcome to Postscript. My name is Adam McIntyre and I am joined today by Pastor Dan Slagle who just preached a sermon titled, Who? Me? Dan, thank you so much for being here with us today. Sure. Uh, so uh, one of my favorite parts of your sermon was your illustration where you had Jesus on one side of the table and then you suddenly woke up and found yourself to be on the other side of the table right. and that specifically his passage uh, from Luke 4 was all of a sudden aimed directly at you and that was kind of an eye-opening experience for sure. you. Um, and some people had some questions about that illustration. Okay. Uh, one person wrote in and they said, so um, if we ever have a snappy comeback to our spouse uh, or something like that, does that mean that suddenly we're out of fellowship with Jesus, that suddenly we're on the other side of the table? Uh, wanted to see what you thought about that. Well, uh, it, if we're being unkind to our spouse, I would say to some degree, yes, we're out of fellowship with Jesus. Sure, I mean, yeah. at a minimum, we're needing to seek his forgiveness. Right. Um, I was simply trying to communicate that all of us have experiences in our lives that should tell us, I'm not living like I should be living. I, I'm not in good fellowship with the Lord right now. Right. And for me, in that particular instance, it was telling Becky to shut up. That yeah. was set off the alarm bells. And, and conversely, uh, if, even when you're on the right side of the table, that doesn't mean you're immune right. from doing bad things. Uh, I, simply using the table as a vehicle to illustrate that sometimes we're keeping in step right. with the Spirit and sometimes we're not. Right. Well, that's why it's so important to, I think, remind yourself constantly of Jesus' words over and over and over again. Uh, even if you're not entirely sure which side of the table yeah. you're on, uh, you always need to refresh to those words. Uh, Amen over and over again. Uh, and then another question was, uh, someone was asking, so if you're on the other side of the table um, and Jesus is one looking at you, mm -hmm. does that mean then that you are not saved anymore? Uh, like, yeah. what, what does that mean exactly? Uh, well, no. In this instance, uh, it certainly does not mean that you have lost your salvation. Right. Again, the point of the table and the opposing views was to communicate the posture of our stance toward Jesus at different times in our life. Right. There are times when I am walking with him, when I want to hear what he has to say, I am obeying him, I am in his word, I'm fellowshipping with his people. Uh, we are in tune, mm -hmm. represented by same side of the table. Right. But there are times in my life where I'm not listening to him and I'm Absolutely. not being obedient. I'm not yeah. in the word or, or anything else. And the uh, object lesson simply was sometimes Jesus has to say a hard word right. to us. N Absolutely. None of us is above that, and thank goodness he does. Right. Yeah, sometimes he has to snap us awake. Yeah. But once we're in Christ, there's nothing that can separate That's us right. from him. That's Absolutely. right. Absolutely. And then you also made a comment in your sermon about uh, spiritual junk food, uh, mm -hmm. things that most of us uh, gravitate towards that are not necessarily healthy versus um, spiritual nourishment that can actually um, grow us spiritually. Can you define a little bit more what you mean by spiritual junk sure. food? Sure, yeah. It, it is the, the things that we substitute for what Jesus wants to provide. Okay. Uh, for example, uh, we're feeling sad. Mm. Uh, Jesus wants to be our comforter. Right. Scripture is clear about that. But uh, sometimes we look for something else to give us a boost, you know, three or four glasses of wine, mm -hmm. a trip to the refrigerator, yeah. uh, you know, what, what have you. Anything that's just going to, ah, okay, now I feel better. Right. Well, there's nothing evil about wine. There's nothing evil about the refrigerator. But when they become a substitute mm -hmm. for Jesus, then that's junk food. Right. Uh, sometimes we're feeling lonely. Mm -hmm. And instead of seeking fellowship with him, uh, some men resort to finding fellowship on a computer screen. Yeah pornographic image, mm -hmm. which isn't even real. Right. And yet in their minds, they believe, you know, that this is somehow uh, eliminating my loneliness. In fact, it's just making it worse. Right. Um, some people feel deprived. They, 
get to a place in their lives where they feel like they've missed out, they don't have the blessings, whatever, mm -hmm. so I'm just going to go buy me something. Right. <laughs> yeah. And Jesus is like, well, why are you spending your money? I've got what's free right. for you. Um, so those kinds of things that in and of themselves are not necessarily evil, uh, except, of course, in the case of pornography, right. um, that we turn to and essentially make an idol of. We're expecting it to do for us what only Jesus can. Exactly. We, we, uh, are, we satisfy ourselves with these short-term uh, luxuries or whatever it is that yeah. ultimately um, don't last and they make us even more unhealthy uh, when really we, we need to be turning yeah. uh, to Christ. I heard a, a preacher say just a couple of days ago at a conference I was attending that when, when you give the Lord free reign in your life, mm -hmm. The first thing he's going to come after are the idols right. in your life. And I got to thinking about the Ten Commandments and remembered that's also the first commandment. It sure is, you, yeah. you know, that is the thing that comes between us and, and puts us on the other side of the table. So, uh, yeah, Jesus has got exactly what we need, that's right. as much as we need, and it's all free. That's right. Well, Dan, thank you so much uh, yeah. for being here with us. And thank you all for tuning in. We will see you all next week. Thanks for joining us for PostScript. Help us keep the podcast interactive by submitting your questions during the morning services. Learn more at faithbridge.org postscript.